Здравствуйте, любители джаза! Меня зовут Виктор Радзиевский. Сегодня мы побеседуем с одним из наиболее ярких и выдающихся современных джазовых композиторов и трубачей из Калевства Нидерланды, известный на весь мир как Леди Майлз Саски Варум, а также с ее пианистом, который вместе с ней сегодня, при... сегодня и вчера приехал в Москву, Вороном Бёрдом. Худемидах, Хюфрау. Худемидах, мне. Hello, Warren. Hey. How are you today? Худемидах. I'm hanging with it. Uh, let me greet you in Russia. And uh, I know that it's uh, for both of you it's not first time here. And uh, I want to ask you about your impressions from uh, this trip, especially from Viva Bosanova Festival, where you played yesterday. Did you like it? Oh yeah, it was very nice. I thought it was a well put together program and uh, it really showcased um, our friends' uh, talents very yeah, well. Yeah, and you played with Symphonic Orchestra? It was the first time I ever got to play with such a prestigious symphony. I've played with symphony orchestras before, but nothing of this caliber. Mm. And it was great to see them work and to hear the... Uh, and to hear the process. Or be the and uh, there was a classical musician, so more jazz, jazzy. Uh, yeah. Classical. I think um, it was a matter of uh, how they interpreted what was put in front of them, yeah. Combination okay. of and, classical. Uh, ah, yeah, very nice. And uh, Saskia, um, what do you think about Tchaikovsky Hall, Tchaikovsky Conservatory, about sound there? Is it um, uh, suitable for Afro-Cuban and Brazilian music? Of course, yeah. yeah, you can play any style there. Oh, who knows, maybe there is a a uh, very strong spirit of classical music and you can play jazz, the instrument broken. <laughs> <laughs> what about audience? The audience was incredible. They were so nice, but because uh, I really felt I was in heaven when I was playing there because with the violins, you know, I oh. never played before with such a symphony orchestra and uh, It was an amazing uh, emotional mm -hmm. experience for me. Also standing on my high heels. <laughs> That was. <laughs> uh, and what about arrangements? Uh, you did it, or no. it was orchestra? No, it was already oh. done. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, really, Russian classical musicians one of the really strongest in the world, and it's a uh, very big fan of this. You know. Yeah. Uh, and um, Lady Miles in Europe, uh, Lady Miles of Europe, it sounds uh, loudy and uh, imposed great responsibility. Yes. Uh, do you like this name and uh, uh, it offends you or you're proud? Uh, do you aspire to be like Miles uh, or it turns out naturally? Yeah, it's a kind of turns out naturally, you know, that his sound, I love it very much and then I try to play like him. But I uh, am not imitating him. I'm not imitating. Having my own um, uh, personality, but uh, and I'm proud that they call me like that. First time they start to call me like that in America, they say, "Oh, Miles has returned to <laughs> Earth in the face of a white woman," and I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> This is very big honor, and especially now because some people they mm -hmm. forget who is Miles Davis. Really? Yeah. So, so I'm trying to keep his uh, legacy alive, also, yeah. and it's a big responsibility because I need to play. Um, um, at, uh, I need to <laughs> as good I could not say, but at uh -huh. least you know to represent yeah. his. Um, His flavor, his uh, his style, his sound, um, sound, the way, <laughs> the feeling that he brings across. Uh, and um, Warren, uh, how it to play with the new Miles Davis? 
Well, first the, th the first thing I have to say is it's always astounding to even think of her in this way. Because, I mean, she definitely has her own oeuvre. Mm -hmm. And she has her own way of approaching music in general. But it's always a great surprise when she actually plays her horn and I'm hearing, oh, she really does sound like Miles Davis yeah, sometimes. Uh -huh. She really does have this aura about her playing. Um, and the more I hear her play, the more I go back and listen to Miles and realize that Miles is probably one of the more under misunderstood musicians. Yeah. Maybe. In this in this jazz music. I think um, there's a big hype around him mm -hmm. and then probably not enough attention to what he actually said on his horn mm -hmm. in order to really contribute to this music. And uh, I mean such a big personality can create these kinds of um, um, these kinds of uh, difficulties in understanding. Mm -hmm. But as, as it's related to, to Miss La Roe, she has her own difficulties to contribute to the world. <laughs> All the time. Incredible <laughs> <laughs> you frown. You frown. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I know the sound of uh, Miles Davis from childhood, and I'm absolutely um, think that everybody have to do this and yeah. uh, and to listen Miles Davis from child years. But it's only dream uh, utopia, but. <laughs> I can dream, yes. Yeah, there you, you can. can. <laughs> and, uh, just yesterday, I was re-listening the birth of the cool of 1948. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. yeah. And uh, then I listened uh, a lot of your records. Oh. Very different. Mainstream records, uh, some uh, fusion records, uh, a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, I understand you try to continue uh, just traditional uh, of cool jazz. Well, yes. you know, I started with my first album uh, inspired by Dubop, the latest, <laughs> yes, which is the latest uh, CD of Miles. It was released after he died, and he was the first one to work with rappers and mm. uh, with uh, DJs and with samples. You know, the modern way yeah, of production. remember two, two. <laughs> Oh, oh yes. yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, lover, you know? and as well as Miles, you like experiment. With hip hop, yeah, with uh, electronics, exactly. with DJs, with symphonic orchestra. Yeah, it's a it's third stream. It's mm -hmm. like a Günther Schuller, maybe, or other guys who try to combine classical music with jazz. Yeah. That's right. And this right. time, with the classical music with Afro Cuba and Brazil, mm -hmm. it's uh, something really very new. And um, um, in your opinion, uh, what is your main difference from my uh, <laughs> uh, my main difference from Miles Davis is that I'm Saskia Larrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that you're a woman and uh, yeah, a lot of things. But I, I, I mean, uh, in a um, uh, music way, uh, um, uh, when you listen to Miles uh, and you know how you play, um, maybe Miles has a special, uh, very specific, his philosophy, yeah. his idea, yeah. his art. Uh, and you like this, you enjoy this art very much. Yeah. Um, but at what moment you stop like, and, and say, uh, I'm Saskia Laro, I'm not Miles Davis. Uh, I have to play himself. Myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's at the moment when I try to connect with the audience, you know. Uh -huh. Like, beep, 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 play for everybody, <laughs> everybody dancing and laughing. Well, Miles is turning his back to the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> it's so, a very specific thing. Yeah. So at that moment, I'm more uh, uh, like uh, maybe like Dizzy Gillespie. Or, uh, oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Louis Armstrong, maybe. Yeah. Louis, Louis Armstrong. Armstrong. No, yeah. Louis Armstrong. You're right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Because he was the first rapper also. Yeah. Yeah. Louis Armstrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. first rapper. 1920. Yeah, or 1930. Yeah, one of them, one of them yeah. a decade. First you know. oh, one of them decades. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. Hello, Saskia. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting that you asked her that question. And I mean, like, from the standpoint of 
how she answered this question, I can tell you that she's very audience focused. Mm -hmm. And I think really, I think of her as like a sort of um, a moon. You know, she really reflects the sunlight into the audience and wants to c try to call oh. an audience uh, attention yeah, to her music, to. as opposed to like Miles seemed to be very musician uh -huh. You know, and that's cool too. But he was and I actually shy, understand I that mm -hmm. he wasn't necessarily shunning the audience, but trying to amplify the music. Yeah, I think he was mm -hmm. a little bit shy and he wants to concentrate on the music and the people took it the wrong way, they thought I had a bad attitude but he just wanted to play the music as, as good as possible and you need to concentrate, you know I, I mean, I don't know if you saw, but during the concert I also closed my eyes sometimes, you know and because I needed to concentrate, to tune mm -hmm. into, yeah. you know uh, so it's like almost like a telepathy or something because I was having like a chart, you know, written out and uh, and everything. But at the end, I just didn't look. I just closed my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I prepared for this interview, I uh, read some articles and um, except trumpet, I know that you play uh, on a block flute, cold yes. <laughs> uh, flugelhorn, double bass, saxophone, piano, electric organ, and of course you sing. So, electric bass. Electric also. bass. Electric bass. Uh, it's very impressive. <laughs> uh, uh, but there is always, always another side, uh, and somebody can say that uh, one instrument is a big, big universe, um, which you can discover forever, all your life. Mm -hmm. and, but you try to open, open uh, all the universes at one moment. Uh, simply put, uh, it may seem, uh, it can be seen, superficial. Yeah. Uh, and the same thing uh, when you try to combine jazz with hip-hop, reggae and other, uh, extremely another styles of music. Uh, what you can say to conservative jazz audience, uh, which can think in this way? Yeah. Yeah, I understand that because um, uh, when you um, they say you should stick to one instrument and really yeah, yes, fine yes. tune and practice on that instrument, but you know I live only once, so mm. I want to experience how it feels to be a bass player, how to be have that role in the band because mm -hmm. it helps me for my trumpet playing too to com communicate with the bass player in the band. I know that Miles was always listening mainly to the drummer. Yeah. So I was also listening a lot to the drummer, but you know the bass for me it helped me so much to uh, also for my compositions. I con uh, construct my compositions as a uh, bass yeah, player. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And then the saxophone. The saxophone helps me so much for my trumpet, for my mm. embouchure. You know, if I play on the saxophone, it's like uh, playing the recorder when I was uh, seven years old. I started on the recorder, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, the block flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, when I play the saxophone, uh, after I uh, play the saxophone, I, I, I feel very refreshed to play the trumpet again. But you know, <laughs> if I have to choose between the instruments, yeah. it's the trumpet. Okay. Every of time. Of course, every time. And what about flugelhorn? It's also nice, but I have a soft sound on the trumpet, so mm -hmm. I don't need the flugelhorn uh, because I already have the soft sound. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe okay. not completely, but uh, anyway. Uh. So that is the answer about the music instruments. Now about the styles. Um, to combine the styles, it's um, if you are a very um, critic and you really know a lot about music yeah. and um, you are critical about the things and you're conservative because you like only this style and you don't like the other styles, uh, then um, of course it can be seen as being super superficial because I had a criticism. Saskia mm -hmm. Rowe Ro is fun, but she's not so good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I understand that. You know, you're, that you're a critic for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but you know, I understand that people think like that, but uh, let them analyze my playing, let them transcribe my solo, uh -huh. let them really look at all my phrasings 
and then let them know, learn about reggae, dance, no, techno, yes. hip hop, um, uh, Dixieland, um, rock and roll, uh, cool <laughs> jazz, everything. You know, let them yeah. learn about everything. Uh. And then the main thing. They have to learn all the dances that belong to <laughs> Really, because how can you play salsa if you don't know if you don't dance, dance salsa? Dance salsa. Yeah. yeah, you know, so... I heard that Dizzy Gillespie was one of the best dancers. Oh, he was? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine this uh, situation, the uh, salsa party, and uh, Dizzy Gillespie with uh, Mario Bausa or Machito, and they dance yes. together. <laughs> Something <Yeah>. incredible. <laughs> yes. And uh, another aspect of today is, you know, you can talk about the music that you listen in, in your living room, and you mm -hmm. can talk about the music when you play live for the audience. Nowadays, there is not so much live music going on because we have DJs, DJs and yes. young people. And how do you keep the young people, the audience involved and uh, connected, oh. you know? So, uh, so you, you try, have to... What? You try to use, uh, uh, to combine new styles of music uh, because you want to enjoy, uh, to enjoy uh, young people to yes. listen jazz. Yes, of course. Yeah. And um, it's, um, for example, uh, we, we were having a concert the other day here, and it was a concert, a very close concert, um, uh, with uh, some tables, people sitting and dining, and we're playing with the band, mm -hmm. and uh, the people were dancing to our music, mm. and it was really nice. And we involve them, you know, we, we show them, okay, now it's a piano solo, because uh -huh, they don't uh -huh. understand. Okay, now it's a saxophone yeah, solo. Yeah, that's the problem. And um, so we are t trying to um, uh, make the people accessible to everybody. And it was like young and old people, and everybody was dancing, everybody was looking, oh, okay, it's so nice, mm -hmm, jazz music, mm -hmm. because now this one is having a solo. While we are concentrating like, oh, we have to play a right note there. But they are just experiencing and feeling what is happening. So you have to make it, uh, um, uh, you have to meddle between the two. You know, you have to, to, to meddle between, okay, now I have to, to, to do the right yeah. thing for yeah. the music. But also, um, I, like, uh, you have to have a story in your, and that is the great thing about Miles, yeah. because he had like a story in his music. And if you if you don't have the story, you lose the audience because you're thinking, okay, now I'm going to play this scale here over this chord, and you're thinking, okay, in this note, this note, you're too late. Yeah, I think it's a most, to bam, most you know? difficult thing uh, in uh, uh, contemporary music and uh, old times. I mean, uh, uh, some people uh, try to speak only with somebody or with your band, and don't try to speak um, with audience. Mm -hmm. Audience don't understand, they have a wall. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, remember yeah. the wall between mm -hmm. Pink Floyd? Mm -hmm. The wall. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one, one guy is from one part and other guy is from other, other part. Yeah. Other side, sorry. Yeah. Um, and other, but uh, from other side, other musicians begin to play uh, only very soft standards uh, to try to add um, some pop music, smooth jazz mm -hmm. and so on. And it's um, background music. Yes, yeah. and it become commerce. Mm -hmm. It's it's not you. It's uh, only your work. It's not it's not art anymore. Right. Yes, and this balance uh, very important that you begin to speak about it because for a lot of Russian musicians, jazz yeah. musicians who will listen to us, uh, it's a very difficult difficult question how to earn money and uh, to become uh, to stay. Who, who you are. Yeah, yeah. Right? But the thing is that um, uh, um, if you let your intuition at that moment, you know, speak, which is you have to really have faith in yourself. Because I was standing there with the symphony orchestra. I never mm -hmm. in my life played with the symphony orchestra. And I was thinking, I need to enjoy this. I, I cannot be nervous. I cannot be <laughs> self-conscious. I need to just enjoy this. And I was enjoying it mm -hmm. because it's only a moment. And you try to to uh, imagine yourself being an audience, enjoying the music. Yeah. So you have to project the joy. And at that moment when you have the faith, then suddenly something magic happens. And, and everybody you, is waiting for that. And mind you, she did this 
transcending the very high heeled shoes yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> she transcended the high heeled shoes, so she really did something very special. Okay. Uh, no, but when I was playing, Herr I was Bert. thinking about that. Herbert. Herr Herbert. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Bird. Mr. Bird. Yeah. Uh, you play? Uh, do you play only piano? I actually also sing. <laughs> okay, and the next question, who's your most favorite piano player? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh man, that's, that's a hard <laughs> one. It's very difficult because... Okay, three. Uh, three. <laughs> oh man, see that's even harder because then I have to make sure I don't hurt the feelings of the other 15 or 20 that I like. <laughs> no, I, I really, um, I, I have a great deal of uh, respect for Bud Powell. Oh, Bud Powell for me oh. is a guy that embodied um, some of the best of the old and mm -hmm. what was to come. What was to come. Um, and uh, I think um, if things were different, he would have done. He would have gone a little farther. I think mm -hmm. if things were if he hadn't had you know twenty shocks to the head. You know, uh, electroshock there, you know, I think that's really what messed him up and uh, sh helped to shorten his life a little bit, um, that he could not transcend that. Um, and that was very difficult and they really didn't understand uh, the kind of damage mm -hmm. that it did to people. And, uh, but he was so great. Um, the other guy, uh, and then this is where it gets hard because we're talking about a guy that people always compare me to is mm -hmm. uh, Felonius Monk. Felonius. And, I <laughs> it's mean, like in, in, in and Yang, at the same time, and the like, extremely different music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, an approach, um, their, their understanding and approach. Um, uh, I think Monk really reached deep down into where he came from and brought something, and I don't think he did this like intellectually necessarily, I think he was calling a spirit. I think he was reaching for a spirit inside of him and that he recognized in his culture, our culture. And, um, and that would be world culture, really. But I mean, embodied in um, what is uh, African-American culture of mm -hmm. that period and brought it to the music in a very special way. And, and it really highlighted things that uh, needed to be said. Mm -hmm. I mean, and for some of us, it's very clear what's yeah. being said. For others, it's it's still still beautiful to hear and to experience. But yeah, I, I, uh, Thelonious Monk is, oh, is so definitely cool. very important to me. Um, <laughs> and then after that, it's really a soup. It's a soup, and uh, it's not just uh, jazz music. It's uh -huh. it's also classical. It's yeah. Not just. It's it's also some rock musicians that Whoa. I really dig, and I mean, and all kinds of different things I've heard in life. You know. <laughs> so it's just it's it's always a very. But you have a third favorite in jazz. Okay, I, I'll pick one. How about that? How, <laughs> I, okay, I, I've I've been listening a lot to Chick Corea. Chick Corea. Yeah, Chick Corea is a lot of fun, and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm amazed at how prodigious he remains. He remains mm -hmm. prodigious. He remains somebody who just um, yeah, he's uh, amazing. Just lets it out, you know, <laughs> like a, a, a fountain of creativity. So uh, yeah, the, I guess you can quote me as saying that he's the third. He's the third. Yeah. Okay, Bud Powell, Bud Powell, uh, Thelonious Monk, Chikari. Chikari. Yeah, a very strong trio. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, I didn't say Abby Simon. I don't know if you know Abby Simon is. He's a guy, uh, important classical pianist. Mm -hmm. He did some versions of uh, Ravel. Uh, he did a lot of nice uh, Chopin stuff, mm -hmm. uh, Rachmaninoff recordings. He, he did a lot of good stuff. And he, he's a very human player. Mm -hmm. can really, he, he, he takes his time with this music and brings out the depth and, and the sensitivity. You should listen to uh, Svetoslav Richter. It's Russian piano player. Okay, yes, I've heard of him. I've heard a couple of things he's done too. Yeah, yeah. very nice. Yeah. 
and um, uh, Saskia. Yeah. Uh, I remember how one journalist um, asked George Benson, great George Benson, yeah. uh, why he stopped playing bebop and uh, mainstream jazz and begin to play uh, pop, uh, pop music, smooth music. Uh, and George answered uh, that he wants to be um, uh, he wants to be heard by millions, not thousands. And uh, money is important too because he has. I, I, I'm not sure, but he has seven sons or daughters. George yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, and, really? And, yes. Oh, and, he uh, needs the money for his family. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, my question is: Do you agree with George? I mean, uh, um, that uh, it's uh, much better when millions uh, listen to your music, not thousands. You know, that's why I play the different styles. Because sometimes I do play for a big audience and I play music, electronic, mm -hmm. like uh, the sax player that we played uh, with on the symphony orchestra. He hadn't heard me in uh, Rio in uh, Brazil because mm -hmm. he was playing after us and I was playing with my electronic band, with my rappers and my African percussion. And we played a program, everybody was dancing. <laughs> so, um, you know. And he said, oh, she's just an electronic artist. He didn't know I could play bebop as well. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I, I heard. He was really surprised, you know, to learn that. So, uh, but my answer now is, you know, uh, when Miles started, it was, he went through all the periods. He started with the bebop, yeah. Yeah. then the uh, electronic, then to the hip hop. Uh, but um, uh, these styles are all there now mm -hmm. and so what i'm doing I, is i tr i love the old mm -hmm. and i love to the new as well so i try to keep myself up to date and i try when i compose to incorporate all the new styles all have you heard styles, of yeah. melbourne style and dirty dutch <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's incredible um yeah, French uh, I, have to, I have to say, <laughs> I, should, I, I must to say the truth, uh, uh, because I'm um, a little bit conservative too. Yeah, uh, you are. No, no, no. I'm not uh, it's only people, <laughs> hip hop, and that's all. But for me, um, when I listen uh, just with hip hop music, for me, it's something dubstep. Uh, dubstep, yeah, it's, it's something uh, very crazy. I heard uh, something very crazy. I, 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 I heard the album uh, Orn of Common. Yeah. Uh, played uh, with uh, some hip hop musicians. Oh yeah! And uh, I put this uh, to my students in college and to listen uh, look at uh, jazz too. <laughs> and they say no, 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 free jazz and hip hop. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> 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 um, and uh, please um, give advice to Russian musicians how to find the balance between commerce and arts and between uh, uh, between you and your other audience. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, let's define what means commercial. Oh, oh no! <laughs> it's a philosophical, philosophical oh, no. question. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, I have my own philosophy. Yeah. If you are a professional musician, it means that you live from music. It means that you are doing it as a profession. It means that when you do a service, which is playing music for people, you get paid for your service to play the music or to sell the music. And, and it means you are professional. It means that you live from it. It's your mm -hmm. profession. If you are amateur musician, it means you love the music, but you're not making uh, money of it. Yeah. So, what do you have to do? Yeah, <laughs> that's the question. Yes, <laughs> so um, you want to make a combination of the both. You want to play the music that you love because you're amateur, you uh, 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 you love, you mm -hmm. love the music and you are professional, you get the money for it. Uh. You pay for it to do what you love. Okay. Mm. You so have it's a, very you simple. Have a, you have a situation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from one side, Tchaikovsky holds concert with symphonic orchestra. Yeah. But they pay the, for example, one thousand, hundred, hundred dollars. Or dollars. Oh, dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for example. Yeah, yeah, we, we can dream, yes. <laughs> and uh, from other side, uh, uh, very famous guy from North Korea, 
She's named Kim Chen In. Yeah. Called you to play in North Korea. But 100 million dollars. Mm -hmm. What you mm. Your choice. Yeah, you know, that really depends. Because, <laughs> uh, I would like uh, to schedule that I can do both. Both? <laughs> yeah. yeah, really. Because I sometimes I play in the small pub mm -hmm. and for a small audience and for small money and play all the bebop and all the music I, I want to play. And sometimes I play for a very big audience and I play uh, music that I love and that they love too. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about uh, political climate? I said that North Korea country yeah. with a very difficult political situation. Yeah. Is it important for you or not? You know, um, I like to, um, as an artist, uh, to be uh, neutral, have a neutral, mm -hmm. so everybody feels comfortable with us as an artist. Um, because sometimes I play in the prison for the criminals, and sometimes I play, play for the king, you know, mm -hmm. for the queen. Yeah. So, um, which means that um, if you bring the music, it's like uh, you bring a good feeling. Mm -hmm. you, you bring, and and then everybody becomes friends again. Mm -hmm. Until they wake up, oh sh oh, we were actually enemies. And then you play the beautiful music, and they're friends again. <laughs> <laughs> very, For a moment, at it's, least. It's a very yeah. important, and I, uh, I hope the people listen to this and. Uh, begin to think about this thing because uh, now we're in a uh, uh, nowadays situation and uh, uh, relationships between other countries we have uh, a lot of problems with yeah. the, what new where musicians uh, can play where they can play and uh, so on and uh, when uh, somebody tried to say that music is not politics, politics and uh, it's another thing uh, nobody don't listen but maybe now when uh, Saskia Lavu said it, <laughs> I hope, <laughs> yeah. But you know, so I think um, I choose not to uh, have a political point of view in my music, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I, I want to the people to become friends. Yeah. Even the people that 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 uh, uh, hate Dixieland and hate reggae and, <laughs> and be, I want them to become friends. <laughs> you know. Reggae with Dixieland. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, I need to write this uh, somewhere. And, uh, don't forget <laughs> reggae, reggae with Dixieland. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you can imagine, you smoke and oh, when the thing? <laughs> <laughs> the mass in the room. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, yeah? Uh, three years ago I was in uh, Holland and uh, visited Rotterdam, Hague, uh, Amsterdam. Um, and I was uh, in a lot of jazz clubs and listened to Holland musicians. It's an incredible country with very kind people. I uh, found a lot of new friends. Um, and Queen Beatrix, I, I saw her palace, it's uh, something exciting. And um, some of the musicians in the jazz clubs, Holland musicians, uh, play, uh, play the mainstream music, uh, some others play fusion music. Uh, I saw a few bands uh, who play the avant-garde free jazz music, very nice, really incredible. And uh, how do you think, uh, what is specific of uh, jazz music in Holland, uh, in art, in business, uh, in audience? You know, um, jazz music is actually coming from North America, you could say, and, uh, and now has spread all over the world, mm -hmm. because I have traveled so many countries and everywhere <laughs> there is a jazz scene, you know, coming from the Netherlands, I didn't grow up, grew up with jazz music, you know. I just learned about jazz when I was 16 years old. First I wanted to be Jimi Hendrix, I played the guitar when mm -hmm, I was 15, mm -hmm. you know. But then I couldn't figure out how to get the distort pedal, you know, to get the sound. So, okay, and the guys didn't want to tell me, so I forgot about it. I wasn't interested anymore. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I was 16 and in uh, high school there was a big band and they played the girl of Ipanema <laughs> and, uh, in the mood and uh, uh, you know all these songs and uh, I said can I join you 
And I said, mm, okay, okay. So <laughs> first they didn't want to, but, but I saw there were four, four trumpets, you know? Yeah. So I said, okay, we can have a fifth trumpet. And then um, they were showing me, um, uh, they were playing, the, the one trumpet player was like, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn this, you know. So um, uh, Warren, for example, he's from North America. Yeah. He grew up. Uh, uh, what city? Um, Harvard, Connecticut. Oh, okay. He grew up, you know, in, in the church. He was singing and playing mm. and with the family and everybody knows so many songs. You know, it's a complete different situation. I mm -hmm. learned it, it later on, you know. Uh, but I know that uh, you graduated the uh, graduated, uh, conservatory? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. conservatory. What is the name of conservatory? The, I forgot. It's in... Um, actually, I went to three. First, I started with classical trumpet. Yeah in uh, Alkmaar, then uh, I went to Amsterdam for improvised music, you know, it was kind of jazz, but mm -hmm. more avant-garde mm -hmm. jazz, for two years, then I took a, a break for a year because I was fired due to a lack of talent. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Great irony. Huh? Yeah. No, but it was true. And then I went to another school because I was thinking I need to finish, you know, this, uh, education. Why? Mm -hmm. I didn't know why, but I thought maybe it's good to have a paper because for later maybe you need it. Um, and I finished in Hilversum. And also half a year before my graduation, my teacher was saying, "Oh, you should not graduate because uh, lack of talent." Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was thinking, no, it's not true. Uh, I, so I went to all the teachers and I asked, do you think I have lack of talent? Listen to this tape and they, uh, of a concert, I listen, let them listen to a tape of a concert. They say, no, you have talent. Uh, so then everybody said I had talent mm -hmm. and I went back to the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so and then later during the graduation he apologized and he said, mm -hmm. here, a bottle of champagne, <laughs> you, <laughs> you are uh, uh, graduated now. So uh, I have the graduation. But coming back to your question about the Netherlands, if it's a special sound. Yes. Sure, um, everywhere in the world is a special way of playing jazz, you know, like I went for the first time to the Philippines and they mm -hmm. copy my song from my first album, they copy my solo, they copy the rap vocals, everything. Crazy. And I start to jam with the bands and I start to play with them and they said, ah, there's that lick, ah, there's that lick. They had analyzed my playing, you know, I was like, wow, you know, this is so great. Anyway, so coming back to um, the Dutch, uh, yes, the Dutch have their own distinct personality mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. jazz. And what it is, I cannot tell you because I have my own distinct personality. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <coughs> A few things that I can tell you about the Dutch. But maybe Warren? Can Warren can say, say something yeah, about it. Yeah, because he's he outside of the situation. He can <laughs> feel, oh, okay, is this guy? He has I'm, to be I'm from the United States. Now. I was born uh, uh, in the country of jazz music. Okay, now I listen to what the German do, what Russians do, yeah. uh, people from Holland, uh, yeah. Belgium, <laughs> Finland, and so on. What do you think about Holland jazz and Holland jazz musicians, uh, about audience? What do you feel? And uh, for example, um, Holland jazz music and Holland audience, Russian jazz music. Russian jazz <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard enough Russian musicians to be able to say I can assess something that's specific um, but I can tell you right away about how I feel about mm -hmm. Dutch jazz and okay and this is once you go into the core of what is Dutch jazz uh -huh. it's the Monty Python jazz Monty Python. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I mean, I, I mean that from from the the warmest place in my uh -huh. heart. In a positive way. In a positive yeah. way. It's I very think. Positive I fight. think it's important that uh, there are people that can find the humor in this music, and can bring it out from their own experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I think uh, is important is felonious monkey. I think, uh, <laughs> you know, if there's one aspect of Thelonious Monk that's always very clear is that he's got a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. and it comes through in his music. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really care about sounding correct or sounding like everyone else. He just has something to say, and he's going to say it in his way. Mm -hmm. And like the wooden shoes, we walk yeah. in with the wooden shoes. <laughs> yeah. Wooden shoes, yeah. yes. You know? and, and so, yeah, and and I can I can name about four or five groups, as well as go back into a little bit of the history uh -huh. of uh, what is uh, Dutch the Dutch jazz scene, yeah. and and what I get from it is that they're really have found a way to be themselves in mm -hmm. a very ticklish way, you know, mm -hmm. and I mean, um, and sometimes they, they go way overboard. Uh, if you listen to some of the recordings of uh, uh, Misha Mingleberg, mm -hmm. I, 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 I never listened. I, I've even gotten to see a couple, one or two of his performances, mm -hmm. and I mean, he's a great piano. He can play some bebop now. Yeah. And he was, he was the guy that toured with... Um, um, Eric Dolphy on his last. Yo, Eric Dolphy. Yeah. yeah. Ah. And uh, but uh, he went on to create his own to to, to to fashion his own creation, his own jazz creations. Um, and of course, he's considered an icon of Dutch music, uh, Dutch jazz music. Uh, one of my friend from Holland uh, said me that uh, in Holland uh, we have um, uh, two uh, very big uh, personality, which. Um, had the most strongest influence. First, it was uh, Charlie Mingus. Uh huh. Yeah. With uh, Eric Dolphy. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And a second, uh, it was Chet Baker. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. They Baker. love Chet there, man. Yeah, and they I was really in nearby Henry Hotel, like he died I in 1988. Him. It was a yeah. disaster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it's and a bit mysterious, actually. I mean. Yeah. I'm not sure if he was thrown out or if he jumped out. Mm -hmm. Or if he fell. I think he just fell out. You know. uh, I heard a lot of stories about this. Okay, it's I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Saskia yeah. um, and uh, Warren, have you already know when you come back in Russia next time? Um, what project you want to show Russian audience? Mm. You have ideas? Boy, we have dreams, don't we? Lots of ideas and dreams. We would, you know, actually we want to stay. Yeah. <laughs> stay a little longer. Well, I think, <laughs> no, <laughs> no problem. No. Yeah. <laughs> we make uh, some calls and. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yes, of course. Uh, we want to do plenty of things because this time we didn't play with our own uh, uh, formation. Uh -huh. We played uh, uh, with the all-star formation um, and we were like um, uh, formed around the sax player uh, Leo Gandelman from uh -huh. Brazil and uh, so we were his friends yeah. that performed with him. <laughs> Dutch G. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a Dutch G. Yeah. But so we were formed, uh, we were invited uh, at the last moment actually, and we were really happy that we could make it because we had to make visa quickly and mm -hmm. everything. So, uh, anyway, so uh, we hope uh, we can plan something. Um, in a more relaxed way, our next visit, um, and then we would love to play with our own formation, mm -hmm. with our own compositions, with our own music, and it can be various projects. You know, it can be for young and old. It can be electronic or acoustic. Oh, okay, <laughs> something with dubstep. Yes, it okay. can be, and with bebop. Dubstep and bebop together. Dubstep and bebop. Yeah, <laughs> from uh, bebop to hip hop. <laughs> I think. Uh, <laughs> I think somewhere uh, in in uh, heaven, Miles Davis, face palm. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you very much. Uh, oh, nice to meet you. Nice you. to hear you and to be near by you. Yeah. Uh, Same here. Uh, it was uh, Saskia Lahu and uh, Warren Burke. Thank you very much.